Okay, so let's pretend that you work for some nonprofit um, somewhere and you get a grant that gives you a ton of money that you can randomly assign some of your clients and some of the people that you serve to a specific program that you're developing. And then you can randomly assign others to not get that program. And then you collect the data for six months, it comes back and you have a whole big Excel sheet of everybody's treatment and control status, um, a whole bunch of pre-characteristics like their their education, their age, their um, income, a whole bunch of other things. And then it has their outcome at the end of the trial. So the outcome for the control group and outcome for the treatment group. How do you figure out if there's an effect? Um, so we'll briefly show how to do this with R. It's actually surprisingly easy um, using statistics. Um, all you really have to do is two steps. Um, the first step is you want to make sure that your key demographics and any other confounders are balanced um, across those two groups. Because if you remember from the previous section, the only way randomization works is because it gets rid of the confounding by kind of equalizing it across both of those groups. Um, and so you want to make sure that equalization happened. You want to make sure both treatment and control have roughly the same proportion of people um, roughly the same average income, roughly the same average age, other things like that. Um, step two, once you check that things are balanced, is find the difference in average outcome in the treatment and control groups and subtract that, or find the average outcome for treatment, average outcome for control, subtract that difference, um, and that's your effect. And that's all you do. So let's pretend you have um, this data coming back from your um, six-month study. Um, it was designed to boost incomes for people who participated. Um, and so you have a whole bunch of different people. You measure whether they're in the control group or the treatment group. You have age, you have sex, you have their income after. So this is the outcome variable. Um, and then this just makes it so that it's zero if they're female, one if they're male. Um, it's basically this column, but a number version of it. So that's the data set we have. Um, so the first step is we want to check the balance. Um, so you can do this with R and dplyr code fairly well, fairly easily by using um, group by and summarize. So if you group by that treatment column that has treatment and control in it, and then we summarize, we calculate the average age in both of those groups and the average um, numerical sex column, then what we get is the average age in both of those groups is 35. Um, proportion of males in both of those groups, one group is 56% and one group is 51%. Um, that is a little bit off. Um, that's not like average age here was perfect um, in part because it's fake data. Um, proportion males not perfect there. And so what you want to do is make sure um, that difference there is not statistically significant. Um, so you can plot it, you can do t-tests, you can do a whole bunch of other things here. If we plot it, um, we see um, here's the average age um, with standard errors around each of the averages here. So if we look, um, these groups are basically the same. Um, the standard errors, the confidence intervals that we have don't overlap at all. Um, age across treatment and control here is roughly the same. So we're probably good, or probably well balanced with age. Um, if we look at sex here, um, in the control group, we have 56-ish percent, and then in the treatment group, we had like 52 percent. Um, these confidence intervals, though, overlap with each other. Um, it's not like they're wildly different. So there is a fairly strong chance that um, they could be the same. And if we did a t-test, we would probably see that they're not statistically significantly different from each other. And if that's the case, then we can probably feel relatively safe in concluding that the, the assignment to treatment and control was fairly balanced. Um, so we'll pretend that that's true and carry on. So step two, we then want to figure out the difference in means. Um, there are a couple ways of doing this in R. Um, one is you can use dplyr and just um, figure out the average outcome in both of those groups. So if we group by treatment, then we'll get um, an average outcome for, for control and for treatment. So if we see that, the control group, their average outcome was 205. Um, the treatment group was 251. So if you subtract those manually, you get $46. So this program had a causal effect of $46. Um, your income was boosted by $46 if you were in the program. Um, and that works. This is great. The only issue with this is it requires some manual math. Um, 
because you you do this, you get the average is 251 and 205, but then you have to subtract the difference yourself, and that's tedious. And so another way you can do this is by using regression instead of calculating group means on your own, um, because regression is essentially a way of finding group means. Um, so if you run a regression model where your y, um, your outcome variable is income after, and then you just have one x here, the treatment variable, using that imaginary program data, if you look at the results here, don't worry about the standard errors for now, um, here's your coefficients. Um, the intercept here is what happens when it's the average income after the program for those um, at the baseline where the treatment is not turned on, which means your control group. So 205 is your control group average. If you look over here, it's the same thing. And then the coefficient here is what happens when the treatment variable is turned on. If you remember the switch and slider metaphor we've been using when talking about regression, this is flipping the treatment switch on that boosts your average, your average after income by $46. Um, and so that is the effect of the treatment there. And it is the same as this manual math over here. And so this is kind of an easier way to just get all of the results at the same time. When you look at this, you say control group average was 205. Treatment group was $46 higher than the 205 baseline. And that's how you can calculate the difference. Um, you can also visualize the difference. Um, if you use ggplot, you can, um, instead of looking at the baseline characteristics like we've been looking at, you can look at the actual outcome. And you see the control group was, their average outcome was 205. It could have been higher, it could have been lower, somewhere around there. For the treatment group, um, their average was 240 or something. Um, I can look back and get the exact number. It was 251. So there they are at 251. It could be higher, it could be lower, but these do not overlap. They are statistically significantly different from each other. And so you can feel fairly comfortable in saying that this was an actual effect that happened because of the program. Um, so that's how you analyze a randomized control trial. Check for balance and then check the difference between the groups and then you're good. Um, one question that often comes up, especially when you're doing the regression version of um, measuring a randomized control trial, should you include other things as controls? Um, we had a column for age, we had a column for sex, we had a column for other things. Should we throw those into the regression because they're there? And the answer is no. Um, because if you remember the DAG, um, all of the arrows that go into the treatment node were deleted because it was a random assignment. And so because of that, we don't need the control for any of the confounders. Um, and so throwing other things in as control variables isn't actually helpful in this situation because it's a randomized trial. And so there's no need to fix any confounding. So don't control for stuff when you have a basic randomized control trial like this. It is tempting to, in your past stats classes, kind of the, the main intuition that you get is just control for everything. But in this case, don't, because um, it's gonna bias your results and give you the wrong answer. So don't over control for stuff.